Welcome to our lecture online. In this example, we have something you might see in a physics class where we're dropping an object from a height of 900 feet and we're throwing it down. Well, we actually have a, give it an initial velocity of minus 30 feet per second in the downward direction. And we're trying to find where it will be after five seconds, what the velocity of it will be after five seconds, and how long it will take for it to reach the ground. And the equation that describes the position of an object in the vertical direction can be expressed like this, where this is the initial height, the initial velocity, and the acceleration, of course. In this case, it will be the acceleration due to gravity. We have units in feet, so we'll use feet in this equation. And when we plug in the values that we know, we can say that the position as a function of time is equal to the initial height, which is 900 feet, the initial velocity, minus 30 times t because it's initial velocity in the negative direction and the acceleration is a minus 32 feet per second square in feet so we can then say divide by 2 minus 16 t squared so since we already now have position as a function of time we can at least answer the first question the height as a function of time is the same as the position as a function of time so y when time equals 5 is equal to 900 minus 30 times 5 and minus 16 times 5 squared. So this is equal to 900 minus 150 and minus, that would be 25 times 16, that's 160, 320, that would be 400. That would be minus 550, subtract from 900, that would be 350 feet as the height above the ground after five seconds. Now to find the velocity, we need to take the derivative of this function. The velocity as a function of time is equal to the derivative of the position with respect to time, which is equal to, well, that's zero, that's minus 30 and minus 32t. So now that we have the velocity as a function of time, we can evaluate it for time equals five seconds. So the velocity when time equals 5 seconds is equal to minus 30 minus 32 times 5, which is minus 30 minus 160, which is minus 190 feet per second. So now we have the position after 5 seconds and the velocity after 5 seconds. Now we need to figure out how long it will take to reach the ground. Now we know that after 5 seconds, it's, to, it's now at a height of 350 feet above the ground, and it's going down at 190 feet per second, and still accelerating at 32 feet per second squared. So in 2 seconds, it will cover a distance greater than 380 feet, so that means that in less than 2 seconds later, it will reach the ground, so somewhere between 6 and 7 seconds. But how do we find the exact value? Well, for that, what we can do is go back to our initial equation, position equation, set y equal to 0, and solve for time. So we can say then that 0 is equal to 900 minus 30t minus 16t squared. And solve that equation for t, which is a quadratic equation. Let's first divide everything by 2, so we get 0 equals 450 minus 15t minus 8t squared and then uh, let's multiply everything by negative 1 rearrange the terms because I always like this to be a positive term so 0 equals 8t squared plus 15t minus 450 and now we can use the quadratic formula to find t so we can say that t is equal to negative of the middle term plus or minus the square root of the middle term squared minus 4 times a times c, which is a minus 450, all divided by 2 times a, which would be 16. Okay, now we need a calculator. So here we have 450 times 4 times 8, and plus 15 squared. Take the square root of that. So now we have the following. This is minus 15 plus or minus 120.9 divided by 16 
which is equal to, now notice we cannot take the negative solution because that will give us negative time and of course the rock can reach the ground before we've thrown it so we can only take the positive option so that means it's minus 15 plus 120.9 divided by 16 so we go minus 15 divided by 16 equals and we have something like 6.62 seconds to reach the ground just like we predicted somewhere between six and seven seconds so that's how we do that we start with the position equation we take the derivative to find the velocity equation we can then evaluate it for the proper time and then at the end to find out how long it reaches the ground we set the position equal to zero and solve for time and that's how it's done